Previously, we explored the mystery of pyramid-like mountains in the Faroe Islands, a remote group of lands between Iceland and Norway. Known for their Viking history, the Faroese language also has ancient German roots, with Danish as the second language. But could these mountainous shapes be overgrown pyramids? Kirby Mountain near Lopera, for example, has straight, even sides that seem unnatural. This symmetry differs from the randomness of typical mountain peaks. The mountain Vikertinder near Saxon appears to have a step pyramid structure similar to those in Mexico. Villengardel's jaw stands 841 meters high, potentially the largest pyramid if it's indeed human-made. More mysterious structures include Bordiarn's Mountain near Klaxvik, whose two peaks resemble pyramid caps. And on Greenland's Carta Marina map, nearby islands show pyramid shapes, fueling theories that connect Pharaoh with lost civilizations. The 10th century Faryinga saga, while fragmented, mentions that the islands were first settled by Grimer Kamban, a pagan likely fleeing Norway's king Harald Fairhair. While some legends link the island's earliest settlers to Irish monks, other sources suggest pence and papes, including dwarfish builders from Africa. A 16th century map even shows Frisland in the Faroe region, labeled by Wikipedia as a phantom island. So, if ancient maps show Frisland, why don't pre-1700 maps show Faroe? Researchers propose that Faroe is the submerged remainder of Frisland. Could this lost civilization have constructed pyramids on Pharaoh, now hidden beneath nature's growth? Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. According to the Wikipedia page on the Frizi people, they are mentioned in the English epic Beowulf, an epic about defeating a dragon, and they've been linked to the Irish Fomorians, a race of giants who emerged from below the earth. This is the Arctic map by Gerardus Mercator, 1595. Here's why Pharaoh is not found on pre-1700s maps, because it was Frisland. And here's why Frisland looks different than Pharaoh. Pharaoh are the remains of the flooded land of Frisland. The next logical step was to read up on Frisian mythology, preferably on German language websites. I learned that the god of the Frisians was called Frisetti, also Fazit or Fozit. I've always been skeptical of using the word gods for these various ancient people. In ancient German, the word Frisetti simply means the leader. The modern German word is Vorsitzender. The ancients called him a leader but modern academia turns it into a god because they display abilities in high-tech that the ancients are not supposed to have had. Forseti was the head of the Frisians. Some researchers say Fozidi is the same as Poseidon, the god of Atlantis, based on the fact that some Nordic languages call Fozidi Poseti. Forseti has his own Wikipedia page on which we read. Glitner, meaning one who shines, is the hall of Forseti and the seat of justice amongst gods and men. It is also noted to have been a place of dwelling for Baldr, for Seti's father in Norse and Germanic mythologies. It has pillars of gold and is roofed with silver, which radiated light that could be seen from a great distance. Baldr is a celebrity in Norse mythology, the son of Odin. For Seti then is Odin's grandson. Why am I quoting this? Well, one, Frisland is the center of the Frissi people. Two, Fozidi was their leader. 3. It follows that this shining hall with pillars of gold and roofed with silver would have been in Frisland, which is today's Faroe Island. I wouldn't just yet grab my spade and shovel and go digging yet, but Pharaoh as an ancient stronghold is looking more and more likely. The mythological accounts also say that Fozidi made temples as large as mountains, out of amber, and layered with copper, silver, and gold. Where are these temples as large as mountains? I put the word temple into a Faroese dictionary. Two of the pyramids mentioned in this video have the sound kir and tin in them. Perhaps old references to temples? I'm also reminded of Crathy Kirk, the British royal family's church near Balmoral Castle. Why bring this up? 
because in Scottish, Kirk means church, no doubt a remnant of the Frisian word for temple, considering Scotland is the closest place to Pharaoh. The Kirby Pyramid could very well have, at one time, been called Kirk V, which is ancient German for Holy V, temple. The modern translation, however, is that Kirby means axe and Pharaohese. In Frisian, Northern German, the word Kirfi means pickaxe. The town near Kirby is called Lapra, which is Pharaohese for run. In Frisian, the word run is simply lop. I could not find the modern translation of Vikertinder. It could be ancient German for holy temple, Vikertin. Vikertinder is near Saxon, which is likely the German word Saxon or Saxon. If these mountains are in fact pyramids, have there been any attempts to get in? I couldn't find any evidence for that. Near the town of Lopera, there was drilling for oil and gas in the 1980s and 1990s, but without success. That's a long time to be drilling for oil without finding anything. Island to island tunnels have been constructed, but I found nothing linking them to the pyramids. I learned that a lot of places are off limits to tourists due to most lands being private. I found one page where these ancient coins were shown buried under a rock. The locals apparently kept them there without telling archaeologists or tourists. I'm not linking to the blog here, but you can find it using the captioning below the image. Here's what I think. Locals, perhaps inspired by this very video, ought to do a little hiking, measuring, looking, and maybe even digging. I don't think I provided compelling evidence of ancient pyramids on Pharaoh just yet, but I have shown that Frisland equals Pharaoh and that, for some reason, the history makers don't want you to know about. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.